Hello, and welcome to episode 7. <laughs> Got it right this time, Jeff. Episode 7 yeah. of the Nerds at Large Gaming Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Darby Hallman. And the other host, Jeff Mayo. And Jeffrey. Darby. What's up, man? Eh, not much. I work today. That's all I got. We're good done talk. here, folks. <laughs> all right, yeah, good podcast. I started school today again, and I kind of want to shoot myself, but sucker. <laughs> That's how I get you. Eh, it's online. It's one class. Hopefully, it won't be that bad. I'm also covered with sawdust because I was doing construction literally an hour and a half before we recorded this podcast. I'm covered in the stench of raw chicken. So we smell fantastic in yep. this room, basically. Jeff, have you played anything since we last recorded the podcast? No. Good. <laughs> but you did play a little bit of Prey, didn't you? Yes, I played the demo. When I say no, I, pl- I played <laughs> stuff before the last podcast, but we're doing it now. Because <laughs> Darby didn't play the stuff yet. Because Darby's a slacker. Yeah, yeah. But Prey is out, Jeff. Yep. It is out in the world. Um, there are some reviews for it, but uh, if in case you don't, you're listening and you don't know, Bethesda has a weird review policy where they won't let any review, like early review copies of the game out to anyone. Like Everyone yeah. just gets it at the same time. So the pro reviewers get the same time you do. Yep. So basically they end up having to rush to get their review done as fast as possible to get it out before other people, so their review's probably not as good. Yeah. That's a topic for another day. Yep. And that's why I'm not a huge fan of Bethesda's thing, but eh, you do you. Yep. Anyway, but there are Metacritic scores, which they're kind of strange right now. Yeah. M- Metacritic in a way is strange, or at least that at least when the scores first came out. I guess after a while it kind of sets and everything's fine. But the reason why Darius said it's strange is, well, I'll just read the scores for the different platforms. PS4's Metacritic score for Prey is 78. PC's is 86. Okay. That's a pretty decent (laughs) jump. That's a pretty big jump. Xbox One is 90. So, I get... What, What could be a reason... For that, Jeff. I mean, that's a mighty huge jump between PS4 and Xbox One, which it seems like the games wouldn't be that different, right? And the... Well, normally you would think, okay, one version is greatly broken, but I guess I need to read the reviews to actually maybe understand why, but I don't see why PS4 would be so much more broken than an Xbox One. Yeah. I have heard there is some jank and brokenness though mm. I I try to avoid specifics because I haven't played the game myself and I don't want to avoid spoilers right well maybe Xbox One players are just a, a lot more positive than PS4 players yeah I'm pretty sure I saw though <laughs> just in general yeah I'm pretty sure there are more PS4 um, reviewers than Xbox One yeah. which definitely oh and just so people know we're recording this on May 8th at about 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Yeah, it's going to get dated pretty fast. Yeah, so. So, let's get into things that aren't going to get dated. So, we have played some of the game. Yeah, we played that one-hour demo. Yeah. So, from that one-hour demo, you got to kind of explore more than I did because I kind of had to rush here at the very Right end. before we did this podcast, I was like, oh, yeah, I need to do this. Let's rush through this. That just means I'm fresh, Jeff. <laughs> uh, okay. Fresh opinions. All right, so anyway, what, what did you think about the little taste you had of Prey? Um, enjoyed it overall. There's some gameplay stuff. I I guess I felt weird, but um, admittedly it could be, cu- could be because I'm not used to first-person shooters slash games as much as other people. Right. They usually don't fit my taste. And what I mean by this, um, people who do not know, the main... Small enemies you face are called mimics. Yeah. Um, and they jump around a lot. They do. They always go behind you, and I'm what I'm what I always found myself doing is look pretty much looking at the floor, swinging around because they keep on jumping, and I just can't hit them. Yeah. Again, that could be on me, or partly on me. Uh, I kind of saw the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I do. I, I do like them, and I like the kind of, um, it kind of, it feels like a horror game, just from the, I mean, we've done a little bit, but you're kind yeah. of like, you have that suspense when you go around every corner, and because, um, if you don't, if you haven't seen much about Prey, the mimics, they can, like, turn into basically anything. 
Mm-hmm. Like it, there, you can walk into a room and there's a coffee cup on the table and you walk past the coffee cup and then suddenly the coffee cup comes alive and it's this alien black tentacle monster and it's jumping at you. So there's kind of that suspense of like you don't know what's real, you know, what you know, you don't know when the monster is going to attack you and everything. And in that way and because of the art style and everything, it's definitely giving me like BioShock type vibes, mm-hmm. which is cool. Like it, it, this is probably the most Bioshocky a game has felt in a long time. No, at least the beginning part of it. Yeah, this is just like very early on. Um, I also, yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of like the combat so far, but I think when you get like more guns and stuff, it might it'll um, probably get better. I watched Darry play most of his hour demo thing. <laughs> he missed um, what I guess what you would call the most unique gun you get so far, which mm. could add to the fun. I'm sure. Yeah, he missed it. I'm like, eh, I'm just not going to say anything and see how it goes. Um, it's pretty much like a glue gun thing where you uh, shoot okay. them or a foam gun. I, don't I think know I have seen a yeah. little bit of that, yeah. And you kind of freeze the enemy in place and then you can hit it with the thing. Right, right, Wrench. Right. Yeah, so. Um, one thing, one kind of weird tangent. I feel like I'm getting kind of tired of of games like this that are like kind of serious and telling you a serious story and the people are talking to you like you're a normal person, but your character just says nothing. Yeah. And he just runs around like this like mute idiot, just like swinging a wrench at things. I kind of like... Am I, I'm just kind of getting annoyed by that. It kind of... It's starting to break it. Like, break the immersion for me. Like, in older games, I feel like it was just more commonplace. Mm-hmm. But I feel like nowadays, like, everything... Every game has such good voice actors. We have, like... Like we have like star voice actors, we have like Troy Baker, all these people we know and everything. I'm just like, just give them a voice. Yeah, especially with this kind of game where you can be the gender, but um, I mean, this isn't like a create your own character thing. No, right. Yeah. This is a set character in this world. Yeah, you pick male or female, and it's like you are Morgan yeah. or whatever you or something. Yeah, and your character looks the same way. So I. But in and it's just like the discrepancy there. They're talking to you like, oh Morgan, you're probably gonna have a lot of questions. Oh Morgan, this or Morgan that, but you just say nothing. Mm-hmm. It may it doesn't make any. It, and I feel like we've just gone past that now. So that kind of stuff seems archaic to me, but it's still happening. So yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's just my opinion. I no, know. I agree. I feel like it could add to it if this character actually did say some things. It may have some witty quips or whatever to spout at the nonsense that is going on around them. Even though it's boring, just like, like I don't... that thing... That thing just turned into a cup. Yeah, exactly. I don't think you would just silently slam your hammer down when a coffee cup turns into an alien and it jumps at your face. Yeah. Pretty sure you would have a reaction to that. And, uh, yeah, it's just like I, like, I don't feel like that's a character. I feel like I'm just like kind of... Like he's just my vehicle to be able to fight and stuff and everything. Mm-hmm. But everyone else is acting like he's a character, which is just kind of... Yeah, yeah. and this is different than other Bethesda games like Skyrim and stuff where you create your own character and you kind of go around the world and, yeah, and at least do in, your own thing. At least in Skyrim, you actually have like dialogue options you yeah. choose. You don't, they're not voice acted, but at least like mm-hmm. there is some um, semblance of you like actually... Have, your character actually being someone who's like communicating things. They, well, there are a lot of other situations where they're just kind of mindlessly running through a field fighting dragons. But <laughs> I mean, like you know, because the games don't have the biggest realism. But that's just one little thing that kind of irks me. Yeah. Just not in, not just prey. That's a lot of games. Um, but overall, I'm I like the vibe of it. Yeah. One thing was the um, that you had pointed out long before I played it, and I agree with you was the um, music. Uh... <laughs> I mean, the music itself is not bad, but for whatever reason, even when you're not necessarily next to a mimic or you don't know a mimic's there, the music will just get really loud and kind of intense. And when I say loud, I mean really loud, <laughs> loud, like much louder than everything else. And especially when, like, the um, person who, you, there's this person that's kind of, like, calling you and leading you through things. He'd call me while the music's playing. It's like, I can't hear you. Like, I literally can't understand you because the music's just, like, yeah. dubstep. <laughs> all over the place so yeah that that was annoying but I did see like before Darty played in the game's out so 
obviously we we could look and see if that's still a problem but that just said when the demo came out that hey we're gonna fix this in the full release yeah which is good it's an odd problem i don't know if i've ever had like audio level yeah and problems it's kind of a before. weird thing because i mean this isn't the first time people have played this far because um games media people have played literally what we played right at events and stuff so right. i'm surprised that hasn't come up before yeah or at least i didn't hear about it no yeah. Well, you have anything else on Prey? Um, I can say I'm interested in the story, but I'm not going to say, even though it's just the first down, that's not going to say any spoilers. Yeah, yeah, I, I think Avoid that. Yeah, but it is interesting. I think it was a cool start to the game, I do think. Yeah. And I found the exploration cool. Darby can't really say anything to that because <laughs> he just kind of went straight for it for the most part. No. Uh, thought I did a good job with that, you know, trying to explore it and having stuff resources there so you can find it if you feel like it's worth it so yeah. far and the like um, diary log things whatever I did read uh, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I, I obviously didn't read all of them but I read a lot of the early ones and I thought they were pretty cool yeah yeah there are a bunch of like emails and stuff you can look through to kind of get an idea of what happened in the space station or location or wherever you are to figure out what happened beforehand yeah. maybe give you an idea of what's really going on yeah and Prey I won't spoil it Prey has a really really cool title sequence I think it was really cool Mm-hmm. But so pray check yeah. it out if you're interested. It's out on sixty dollars, whatever, and all the major platforms. Well, if you're interested, just play the demo first. Unless yeah, play, on, yeah, play play the demo. Well, unless you're on PC, but then you have the Steam refund. So yeah, do that. Yeah, whatever. You, you get a longer demo. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, uh, Jeff. Um, it's that time of week. All right. Yeah. So um, just so you guys know, I feel like you know. <laughs> just, yeah. just so you guys know. Uh, this week's going to be a different episode. We have one news item, and of course it's Injustice related, because this podcast wouldn't be this podcast if it wasn't for Injustice. Uh, and, and it's the most interesting thing that came out since we recorded like the last episode five days ago. <laughs> yeah. And after that, we're going to do a spoiler cast on um, what remains of Edith Edith. What remains of Edith Finch? <laughs> that's, a, that's hard yep. to say. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna start out. We're gonna have a section of um, no spoiler section, and then we'll let you know before we move on to the spoiler yep. section. This and is like a smaller indie game that a lot of people are loving right now. So mm-hmm. it's hopefully we can let you know if you should play it. Or not. Yeah, and we should have timestamps saying this is when we start the spoiler free yeah. part, and, and then we'll have you know on there spoiler part. Yeah, we'll make it very obvious. Yeah. yeah. All right, Jeff. So, Injust Cast, Injustice Cast, what yeah. we got? Well, all the characters have been revealed. We're a week from launch. So, another one is the hype. S- is the hype building within you, Jeff? It is. It I, is. On a level of 1 to 10, where's your hype? 50. All right. <laughs> well, what sucks is I'm going to be busy most of the next week, so I don't know how much I'll actually be able to play it. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, the town a good bit. Um, but. Like I said, all, all characters are announced. Regular characters comes out next week. So another one, of course, decides to announce the first three DLC characters. Of course. Yes. Well, technically the second through fourth because Dark Side. But yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> pre-order, right? Dark yeah. Side. Yep. I am sure you can buy him without pre-ordering. I mean, yeah. You gotta pay money, but yeah. I think they put Goro down uh, further down. The it's line the exact eventually. same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But they showed a trailer. And what was exciting about this trailer was that it's technically the first time in months that most people who've been following the game have no idea who could be coming. I mean, kind of have some general ideas of who it could be, but we didn't have a leak telling us, like, it's probably these people. Yeah. So, if you haven't seen the trailer, the three characters that have been revealed for DLC are Red Hood, Starfire, and Sub Zero. <laughs> Because, of course, they got to have a Mortal Kombat character. Oh, yeah. Jeff's really excited about Sub-Zero, let me tell you. Oh, yes. And it gets even better, folks. At the end of the trailer, they have silhouettes in the background for other DLC characters. Two of them are obvious. One is Black Manta. Yes. Which, Aquaman villain, yay. Yeah, that's about awesome. About time. Um, the second one, Raiden, Raiden, whatever, from Mortal Kombat, because we need another Mortal Kombat character in this game. <laughs> 
Uh, like I like I agree. Like I, I'm on your side. I agree with you that it's like all right. There is so many DC characters. Why why do we have two Mortal Kombat characters when we could just add more DC characters? But it's also kind of funny to watch your reactions to this, <laughs> especially Raiden. Out of yeah. all the Mortal Kombat characters, you choose Raiden. Yeah. I mean, we're assuming right now, unless there's some straw hat DC character that I'm not aware of. No. I mean, (laughs) someone would have brought it up already. I mean, like, stuff I look at, someone would have to be like, oh, yeah, this one character wears a hat like that. (laughs) But no, this is, yeah, unless they're trolling us, it's obviously him. I mean, I I get why they do guest characters, because they're historically, in NetherRealm games, the best-selling DLC character. Scorpion was by... Oh, and Sub-Zero will be. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we already have an ice character, but moving on. Um, I mean, I'd be even more okay with guest characters if it's like a from a, characters from another comic that not usually in fighting games. Like mm. one people always bring up. I mean, he wasn't a fighting game, but that was forever ago. Is Spawn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one could still get in. We don't know. But yeah. then at that point, when I have, we have two other guest characters from Mortal Kombat, I'm like, I don't feel like any more guest characters. Yeah. <laughs> There's one DC at this point. No. And at the point now, it's like, I don't want any vet- veterans either. I just want straight new characters. <laughs> Make it interesting. Well, um, so does anyone have any guesses for the other silhouettes? Um, Azrael, for one of them. It just kind of, silhouettes just kind of like his Arkham model. And I'm by the look on your face, I'm guessing you have no idea who that is. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, another Batman character. <laughs> he was even Batman once. <laughs> for a short time oh, okay um, but he's pretty cool he's a knight and he has like okay. flamey magical sword type things and not necessarily magical but yeah sounds so, cool to me yeah so how many characters were total in those silhouettes nine nine okay. so they're ten in all counting dark side DLC that's a lot that's a lot of DLC yeah, um, hey, and as far as the characters they announced yeah I'm, I guess we should talk about that yeah well I think I made how I feel about Sub-Zero very clear yeah, so I, I think we can table that one. Um, Red Hood, I was going to be shocked if he wasn't one, because mm. that's arguably the most demanded character. Yeah. Like, even in the main game, especially once it kind of goes on. It's like, we may not get him, so people, yeah, we've been championing for, championing for him to get in, so that's no surprise. Right. My main thing is, I like Red Hood, but another Batman character, another human with, like, guns or normal weapons yeah I mean they can make his fighting style cool but just from you know power standpoint and everything power set standpoint compared to other characters it's kind of boring yeah they could do a good job with him I guess maybe it's good that we don't have Deadshot Deathstroke and Red <laughs> and Robin with the sword uh, yeah yeah <laughs> so and Starfire Yay, more Teen Titans. I was not expecting that. I was expecting it just because, I mean, I I understand why you know. Yeah, you know more than me, but... Yeah, because she's one of those characters that have been asked for frequently. So, oh, yeah. It, well, I mean, all the Teen Titans have, yeah. like, from the old cartoon. I mean, it makes sense. Oh, yeah, I would say like, I still wish that there was a Teen Titans skin, though, because I just, when I look at her, I think of... I think of the Teen Titans version of her, but, but <laughs> either way, people. either way, it's really cool though. Yeah, they might have some gear that's kind of a more of a nod towards yeah, that yeah. than other ones. Um, but while well, I like Starfire, I'm interested to see what they do with her move set because her powers are, I mean, at face value, a little generic. Yeah, it's a lot of laser beams and stuff. Yeah, I, I can't even remember everything exactly what she do, does, but like, yeah, I don't think it. I don't yeah. remember it standing out. Really, is anything that crazy? I mean, yeah. it's like, yeah, Superman has lasers. Yeah, <laughs> well, they can do stuff. I mean, I think they can do stuff to make her interesting. And yes, again, Sub Zero. Yeah, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I mean, even part of it is is the fact that we already have an ice character. Yeah. So at least, at least some. From a utility standpoint, some crossover. Yeah, yeah. But, but hopefully they make them different enough. But they they already have a few characters in there that like seem like they would be the same, and they've yeah. found creative ways to get around them. Yeah. So you think you'll buy this pack when it comes out immediately with these three? I already have. Oh, you Ulti- already? I mean, I have the Ultimate Edition. I'm already getting every DLC. Oh, you're getting character. every DLC. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, my, the Ultimate Edition, the hundred dollar one, but I'm getting it for like twenty plus dollars off. Damn. Okay. Hundred dollar so, one. Um, what all comes in that? Um, well, the game, of course. 
every DLC character, the, all nine of them, so, plus Dark Side, of course, and um, the premiere skins for Reverse Flash, Power Girl, and John Stewart Green Lantern. Okay. I mean, in the end, it's it's cheaper to get this than not getting all the DLC characters separately. So I'm like, eh, I'll probably end up getting all you these. Probably get them anyway. Yeah. 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 I mean, even like with the Mortal Kombat characters, we have friends that are more into Mortal Kombat who will probably be happy for these inclusions and feel more at home. <laughs> and probably beat us. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, again, it's kind of cool. I, I'm a sucker for crossover stuff, but it's just the whole thing of the DC fighting game has one DC characters. Yeah. Or, again, at least comic book characters are not in as much stuff. Like, I'd be okay with a Watchmen character, for instance. Mm. I mean, it's kind of connected to DC at this point, but, yeah. yeah. Well, that being said, I do like Mortal Kombat a lot. So I am interested to see what they do with Sub-Zero. Especially since, like, like at least visually, I thought that the um, Injustice Scorpion was, like, the coolest looking Scorpion. The same guy designed the Sub-Zero. Okay, so I'm, I'm interested to see how he'll look and if his moveset will be any different than, like, Mortal mm-hmm. Kombat X. Um... I know that's one of his movesets, but I can't remember the name of it. They showed in his pose thing at the end with all the silhouettes, Sub Zero having two swords. I know that was like one of his. Yeah, I think that was one of the. One of his three movesets, so I might take more from that. Oh, since. Yeah. The, they uh, like, like Mortal Kombat X, yeah, there's only one thing, but I guess he can have special gear moves. Which is also cool. Um, say this. I don't know if you knew this, Darby. I probably brought it up at some point, but every um, DLC character is being treated like the in-game characters where they're getting a whole bunch of gear. Like, oh. they already confirmed. Oh, okay. So you'll be able to customize them all. That's why I was saying, like, with Starfire, if you... There's probably something in it that makes a, a nod, you know, to the old Teen Titans cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be, uh, I hope so. I hope yeah. so. That would make me happy. Yeah. I just I'm sad that Raven's not also in there. That would be cool to have both. That would be cool to have Cyborg, Raven, and mm-hmm. Starfire, and technically Robin, not the same one. Yeah, not yeah. Dick, but yeah, we got Damien. Yeah, yeah. yeah all we'd be missing is Beast Boy. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason to believe he could be potentially be one of the other DLC characters. We're not as sure about because he's also one of the most highly requested. Yeah. Just but, as we were kind of, me and Jeff talked about it at one point, I mean, like, it would be awesome, but it's also probably kind of hard to make Beast Boy. Yeah, it, I can't imagine how hard the animations and stuff would so be you have, changing. You have to, I mean, you have to at least design a few animals, because you, yeah. you have to let them feel like they can change into a bunch of different animals, so you have to think you have to at least have, like, four animals. Yeah, somewhere or, in there. Or something he, like that. I, mean, I had a thought you could make those trait turning to animals, but then there's a whole bunch of different move sets. And one of the most iconic ones that people think of, especially if you watch the Teen Titans cartoon, is a gorilla. We already have a gorilla in this game. Yeah. I'm not saying that means no Beast Boy, but well, no, you would, it, making a moveset for Beast Boy would be hard. At least, I like, yeah, that. animation-wise and everything, making Beast Boy would be like making four characters or something like that. It would yeah. be, it'd probably be a huge undertaking. I mean, it doesn't like that, but and, like doing combos and him maybe changing to animals, that sounds like it'd be very difficult to animate. Yeah, but I'm not an expert on this stuff. No, and, and we're, like what we like, talked about, it'd be easier even if it was like Marvel vs. Capcom the art style. But this is more more realistic art yeah, style, yeah. so it'd be significantly harder. Yeah, and making it look good and making it flow good, especially if he gets hit mid combo. Yeah, does he yeah. automatically revert back without like instantly? Yeah. And like his size would be constantly changing. The, yeah, his hitboxes hit would, yeah. would be crazy. So yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of variables. I mean, there. again, <laughs> I like Beast Boy, but yeah, I understand why they're kind of yeah. not doing that right away. I'll take Starfire. I just wish we had Raven, but yeah. yeah. But I am really excited about this game, Jeff. The more we talk about it, the more excited I get. I can't believe we're this close to it. It's. Mm-hmm. I, I hope I hope it sells really well. I'm sure the first one sold really well. I, I'm sure it will, but oh yeah, it's, it's coming out at a good well. time too. But yeah, um, I'm interested to see how it sells compared to Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean just partly because even though why DC's um, down compared to Marvel as far as the public eye, yeah. Um, Netherrealm is better with the casual crowd. I think the, I, I think Netherrealm 
I don't know, I have more faith in Injustice than I do. Yeah, well, even then, is like, even the hardcore fighting game community from I've seen it is kind of weary of Marvel vs. Capcom if and if what they've seen so far. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then they people just have faith in another realm. They really just don't. They they haven't done something wrong in a while. Like, well, this, they've been like. And, and, well, it's kind of interesting the, reading arguments about, like, I mean, part of the reason I brought that up is because there was a um, thread on NeoGAF about which one's going to sell better. There are a lot of people saying Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite because Injustice is a casual game. Hmm. <laughs> that sounds like an argument for Injustice. Yeah, yeah, it does. And, you know, if I'm saying Injustice is a bad game because it's not appeal, appeal strictly to... No, but if we're talking about sales, I mean, like... I know. Yeah, if you, it, when we're talking about sales, if it's more of a casual game, it probably means it'll sell better. Oh, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm going on NeoGAF and everything, but there are uh, a good amount of posts posters on there who can't separate like their feelings from the public thing. I mean, there's a chance if they're able to, if they're able to market um, Marvel vs. Capcom enough to where just any old casual Marvel fan is interested in it then yeah. whatever but I maybe it's just because of the circles I'm in but I feel like I'm hearing more about Injustice yeah. right now from gamers you know, I'm hearing more excitement from Injustice and more like positive stuff mm-hmm. And, and again, like I think we talked about last week, the graphics for Marvel's Capcom don't look so hot, and that I mean, all the crazy, um, like super moves and stuff will appeal to casuals, <laughs> um, you know, more for Justice than it will for Marvel's Capcom. Yeah. How many times will we say casuals in one pod- podcast? I don't know. And I, don't, I don't mean that as a bad word. No, but. it's not. We're f- when it comes to fighting games, we're casuals. Yeah. 100,000%. <laughs> no, we're, we suck. Yeah. That's part, part, that's probably part of why we like this this game and Mortal Kombat because you can you don't have to be that great to like play with your friends and just yeah. Well, and they give and they give you. Hey, we don't know everything. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, but history shows from Capcom games. Another one gives more stuff to do, like single player wise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, I, I guarantee you, the story will be a lot more yeah. entertaining probably than the Marvel vs. Capcom. Yeah, I'm interested to see because, like I've said before, I am a sucker for crossover junk. Even <laughs> if the story is nonsense, I just enjoy it, <laughs> especially when it's a bunch of stuff I enjoy and like. Yeah. I mean, I played Project Cross Zone. Oh, uh, yeah, that thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just seeing the characters interact is fun. I know you love Just and all that. Like, yeah. I mean, it's a great game, but yeah. Yeah. And Smash Bros. and PlayStation and all that stuff. I'm a sucker for it all. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, Injustice comes out in how many weeks? Or next week. Or is, ne- is next Eight tu- days. Next Tuesday? Yep. Okay, yep. So... We'll, we'll look at our work schedules and see if we can get some play sessions in. Okay, I, did, I couldn't remember if it was Tuesday or Friday. Yeah. It's normal. It's coming out a normal day. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Jeff, I think it's time to move on to our first spoiler cast. Well, depending on what happens, this could be the second. Well, yeah. First um, video game spoiler First cast. video game spoiler cast. Uh, if you're listening to this and you haven't heard, we're also going to have a Guardians of the Galaxy spoiler cast up. You yes. should definitely check that and out. And we will be recording that right after we get done with this. <laughs> that we will. We're, we're going to be real tired boys. It's almost 11 o'clock right now. Yep. <laughs> um, but we're going to try to do a lot more of these. Uh, and it's going to... the Most of the spoiler casts are going to be like on their own channel. We're kind of doing this as part of the, uh, the normal podcast. Yeah. But um, we want to do a lot more of these, so let us know what you like about what you don't. Mm-hmm. All that good stuff. We'll probably talk about a little more general spoiler cast stuff in the Guardians of the Galaxy one. Yeah, yeah. And so, no, when we do these things, we're going to... Oh, wait, I think we talked about it earlier. I can't remember. I'm tired. We're going to do spoiler-free, yeah, yeah, okay. and just, then... Just let it go. <laughs> Sorry, we're going to do spoiler-free, yeah. let you know when spoilers happen, and then do that. They'll go, they'll go for all our spoiler casts. Yeah, okay. So we are talking about What Remains of Edith Finch. It is available on... Is it available on the Xbox? You probably looked at it. I probably should have known um, that before we came here. It's no, at least I'm a, pretty, it's on PS4 and PC. All right, P- PS4 and PC. It's like twenty dollars, like a two hour game, two to three, th- hour, two to three hour, easy. You can just do it in one sitting. Jeff, what do you think about what remains of Edith Finch? I like it a lot. I like it a lot as well. 
Now, have you did, did you ever play Gone Home? Yeah. Okay, you played Gone. Okay, yeah. This definitely gave you know obviously that's the where you go immediately. I think when you see this, you kind of compare it to that or whatever. And I love Gone Home too. And this is definitely it, it's kind of the Gone Home vibes. Like you get the um like it's a you know kind of a environmental storytelling that kind of thing. I refuse to call it a walking simulator because I just hate that term so much. I just I, mean, I don't have a problem with it. It's just when people automatically use that and mean it in a bad way. Like it automatically is a bad game slash it's actually not a real game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I get. It. I just like just the. I don't know the term, just the, like the way that people use it. I think bothers me, but yeah. anyway. So, all right, the story of this game. I should probably start it. The story of this game. You um just to set it up. You kind of you're following this uh family, the Finch family. Mm-hmm. And you're playing Edith Finch. You're going back to this house like that she grew up in. And um, you're visiting, there's all these different rooms that the, like, grandma, I guess, of the family, like, the the um, elder, like, her grandma, uh, se- like, everyone has sealed off different rooms of this house because, like, there's this family curtain. I thought it was the mom. Was it the mom? They both might have done different rooms. Anyway, whatever. All right, this, there's, like, a... It seems like there's a family curse going on in this in this family because everyone like everyone has died. There's all these different people. Edith is this literally the only one left. Yeah, in family. she's the only Finch left. And um, as you're walking through the house, you see all the different doors to these people, and it like shows their birth date and death date on there. Yeah. And you can like look through like peepholes, and you see like their rooms are completely intact. Like after each one of these died, they sealed off the room, and no one's allowed to go in there. And they just keep adding on to the house. Mm-hmm. Really weird family. Yeah. Very very weird family. Yep. <laughs> um, but kind of the way that the story is told to you is, you um like end up going into these different rooms, and you kind of go through a weird flashback slash like metaphorical. Yeah acid trip sometimes well go in more detail yeah about like um about how they died and stuff this Mm -hmm. is just kind of this is just how the story is told yeah and um and you you see these flashbacks of uh, of them and it kind of tells you about them about the struggles they were going through and how they died and a lot of them they died by many of them died by like kind of weird circumstances some of them more and more normal right relatively we'll go on that later yeah and so that's basically that's that's the gist of how you and and it's you just there's not a whole lot of like gameplay it's you walk to these different things yeah and yeah like Darby said it tells you how they died and we'll go into more later how they tell these stories are interesting yeah and can vary between the different relatives you're um, doing the flashback for yeah, and you're figuring this out with Edith, like Edith. This all this information, a lot of it has been hidden from her, yeah. so you're kind of figuring it out with her. Um, and I think, and because it's because obviously this game shines in those flashbacks. That's like the biggest part of this game, and that's how I think this game kind of out gone home, gone out gone homes, gone home. Yeah, because you have the environmental storytelling, but those like. I knew they were coming, but they still, like, I. some of those went in places where I never expected them to, and it's, it just, it was crazy to me how much detail and thought were put into each one of those flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Like, it becomes a completely different game at times, like, you're, like, yeah. and, like, this is a game that made me laugh, it made me, honestly, I started to tear up several times Mm -hmm. it made me like confused it made me like there were so many emotions that went on in this game yeah i feel like this ups the the bar or whatever for these kind of games walking simulator whatever you want to call it yeah i don't know other way to put it that's fine that's fine Uh, first person adventure story (laughs) game whatever yeah we need a better term but fine well the walking simulator is fine but yeah (laughs) the only steam line name for this genre that i know of (laughs) it is yeah, I think it definitely there's a new bar for that because even like um, uh, Firewatch. Yeah, I loved Firewatch, but this also I think this sets a new bar over Firewatch. There's mm-hmm. just the way that they use the environment to tell 
all this stuff and how like the just it's like the story is just like kind of slowly unraveling to where you're just like every single room you're so interested to see what the next story is going to be mm-hmm. and what they're going to do because it kind of seemed like there was no limits it was just like it, with the different flashbacks it could be anything from like the art style would completely change yeah. and it would um yeah, I don't want to get yeah, into yeah. that. All the circumstances for each character. Yeah. Okay, we'll just say this. Darby, do you recommend this game? Which should be obvious at this point. 100%. Like, it's $20. That's nothing. Yeah. I also recommend it. I know some people might think two to three hours, you know, then spending 20 bucks for a game because, yeah. It's worth it because it's one of those things. This game is different. It makes you feel different things from most other games. Especially that price and this amount of time. That is definitely worth it. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, like, it's more expensive than a movie, obviously, but to me, it's kind of like going to see a movie. This is like, I mean, this is really a narrative experience that I think is definitely worth $20 to experience for a night or something. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, this is kind of like, I mean, this is definitely, this is one of those, like, video games as art type of of thing. And that's why I think, obviously, it's not going to be for everyone. Nope. I mean, like, a lot of people... If you didn't like, like, the Gone Homes of the world and stuff, while I think this is different enough to where you could like this, even if you didn't like Gone Home, but if you don't like that style of thing, you might not be into this. Mm-hmm. Um, important note, just in case. Me and, I don't, as far as I know, Dari hasn't played this game, and I haven't either. These are the same people who did Unfinished One. Right, I have not either. That's on my list. I think it's on... I think I got it for PS Plus once. I'll mm-hmm. probably do that soon, since I now know there how good yeah (laughs) Yeah. so go check out what remains of Edith Finch absolutely if you have played it and want to hear our thoughts on everything stick around when we talk about spoilers yep so are we ready yep ready to do spoilers yep alright so from now on spoilers from this point onward Uh, yep we're gonna give a little countdown 3, 2, 1 okay we're we're live alright alright we did it (laughs) <laughs> so Jeff, said Arby. I think the first question I think uh, that I think is obvious to ask is which 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 um, flashback like stood out to you the most? Lewis. Yep. <laughs> yep. I one hundred percent agree. I mean, how can I not? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've heard from a lot of other people. They all say that. So like, what 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 about that? It's obviously. Is this weird thing, and then when you, um, for people who may not remember the names as well, this is the one where you're, um, it's Ida's brother when you're in the factory, yeah, the factory the, the worker, fish factory, yeah, yeah, the fish factory. It's kind of a weird thing where you're, um, you know, chopping off the fish heads and doing that mm. monotonous um, task, and then you're playing his imagination world, right? At the same time, to where, and then they talk about, um. Well, the story is told through um, Lewis's psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. So, and she talks about how when he's work, working, he's like in a whole different world. At yeah. some point through that, I realized I'm pretty much Lewis because I'm yep. going through the world. And I'm still doing this monotonous yep. as not even yep. thinking about it. Kind of yep. like how he would. Yeah. No, that was brilliant. Like everything, like I loved all of them, but when I got to that, as soon as it started, it, like you, and that's the crazy thing is you knew where that was heading. Like mm-hmm. you knew that, like oh, they're making like I'm like him because I'm like this. Yeah. And even you being aware that they're trying to get that across to you, you still lo- you still like lose yourself in the imagination part. Mm-hmm. Like even though I knew that was happening the whole time, there was still I got to a point where I didn't even know I was doing that. Yeah. I was just doing... There was times I was doing it when a fish wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> and, like... I think that we... We're going to pause and see if we lost audio there for a second. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Hello, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> That's... Yeah. Anyway. But... That... um God, I don't even remember where I was. The fish. The fish. Yes. Yeah, you completely get lost in in doing that to the point where that that just like out of all of them, they all like all these things um kind of put you in the mindset of the um person who died, but none of them did it as much as that. Yeah. Like at that point, like you felt like you were 
And it was just, and it was just beautifully done how it goes from like the black and white, you're just walking with the thing, and then mm-hmm. it ends with this gigantic 3D yeah. space. And then when you get up to the top, and then you see the <sighs> guillotine, like, do I have to? You're like, this is <laughs> so freaking sad, dude. Yeah. Ugh. And yeah. then when, you, well, and you got the conveyor belt thing, and you still see, Lou, you can look down and see Lou's doing like, well, bye. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing there, and you have to yeah. just leave, leave him behind or whatever. And just and the like, and shout out to whoever did the um psychiatrist voice too. She mm-hmm. did a great job there. Where's that thing? Was good. Thing. It was. Yeah, whole, yeah, yeah, it was really good the whole time. And that just the way that was paced, and the way it just like built and built and built. That was mm-hmm. a wonderfully done thing, but. They were all great. Mm-hmm. I think another one that um, really st- stands out to me is the bathroom, the the, um, the baby. Yep, yep. Because that, like, you knew that's another one. You, a lot of these, you know where they're going, and you just kind of dread it. But then it's also beautiful in a yeah. weird way. Like all of these that are tragedies. Like this is a baby. This is a baby that drowned in the bathtub. Mm-hmm. It's like this is freaking depressing as hell. But then it's also so charming and endearing in a way. Yeah, I'm um, trying to. Yeah, it would have been um, Sam, um, who was talking, whose yeah. voice. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah um, Gregory, the baby's dad, yeah. um, talking in a note, to, a divorce note thing to Gregory's mom. Um, yeah, saying like it'd be interesting to see the world through his eyes, and that's kind of what you're doing when he's talking about it, going on and on about it. Yeah, he's like he always zones out or whatever, or he's yeah. not like yeah, he's in the little world. And it'd be fantastic to see the world through his eyes when the well, the whale's doing everything. You're bouncing, bouncing stuff off the whale and just doing everything. Yeah, and you're just like yeah, and in this the you get the like they're arguing obviously like going through this divorce and everything. You can mm-hmm. hear that in the background. But then here you're just in this magical like you know, the frogs jumping. You know, yeah. There's music everywhere. You turn the, it's like you turn the water back on. And everything goes happy. But you know what you're doing. You know what's happening. And yeah, it's just, you know, like it's it's again one of those things with Lewis. It's obvious what it's wanting you to do at that point when the mom turns it off and yeah. then it's stuff like oh let me oh. That's with this game. There's a sense of dread that yeah. is just like present throughout this entire game. But because you know how all these things are going to end. Yeah. You just don't know how exactly how. And and that's why they they, they managed to... It's the simultaneously like the most depressing, but also most kind of like charming game mm-hmm. I've ever played, which is crazy. Another one, which I had heard about this, and I had even seen pretty much the whole segment, which was the swing set. Mm. I had pretty much seen that whole segment from like E3 things and from other other I stuff just knew like that. Swing set at some point in this game. <laughs> I had seen the whole thing, but there's something so different about playing it. Yeah. Because I don't know about you, but like whenever it was getting to the point where like the swing was going like so mm-hmm. high to where you were like seeing the ground do all that, I was getting like goosebumps and I was yeah. like starting to I was tensing up because I'm like. Oh, this is. <laughs> All right, wait, what happens if I just stop right here? And, do that? <laughs> <laughs> and that's they make you. You have to keep going yeah. with the swing. That's what the game just makes you push headlong into death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is, oh, this was a very well made game. Yeah, I'm um, just wondering from this point, maybe just kind of go through the different ones and just kind of give our thoughts. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. more in order. Um. Yeah, I had to jump to Lewis. I had oh, yeah. I had to talk about that. <laughs> that was... uh, first one, you know, yeah, I guess this is pretty much in this order. You do Molly, the little kid. Yeah, when they started out with the weirdest, they started out weird. Uh, uh, I was really confused, like, wait, what's going on right now? Like, Yeah. Uh, and, and, th- and then, especially when you go for the game, it's like, oh, this is like from her imagination and her, yeah. her, her standpoint, especially when you think, to me, second, you realize, oh, yeah, this is from her perspective because this is what we're reading. Yeah. So, yeah, it's what Edith is reading. Yeah, it's like, is there a bunch... I mean, I, like, when you turn into the cat, it's like, wait, is there a bunch of magic mumbo-jumbo in this thing? <laughs> Getting confused, and then it's like, oh, yeah. And that's what... Like, I, I knew know. I knew that the game got surreal like that at times. Like, you know, I knew it was kind of, like, metaphorical. I knew that. But I didn't know that you were going to be a shark yeah. falling down a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> or a sea monster killing people. Oh, oh, dude, that was so... <laughs> I mean, that monster was so freaking, like, yeah. messed up and gross. <laughs> nah. That, that was, that, like, that one was, that was a weird one to start out with because it was disturbing. It got... Yeah, it, it set some weird expectations. It did. For the rest of the game. 
it ran the gamut from just being weird to being straight up disturbing because just yeah. you had like her like talking over it and like and I was so hungry I couldn't you know it was like so like um with her I was a little confused so like did she, I, th- she, I think I was about to bring up the exact same thing she, so she ate something poisonous or something that, like, that that's was, the only that's thing basically I can what think I'm she ate those yeah. berries and, yeah that's where I and was a bunch of random things that's like from. the only thing I can think of that caused her to die because. I, I can't see it being, especially with the way everything else went, it being, from her eyes, like the monster being under her bed. Yeah. It's obviously not that. Like, she's seeing things. Yeah, she yeah, she's like, hallucinating. Yeah, yeah. That's the only thing I can... And that, that's probably why she saw the cat and saw the yeah. owl and saw, like, everything she, Yeah, else. she was just hallucinating through all that and then and yeah. writing, writing it down. Right. And that's... <laughs> so damn sad. Yeah. Again. Um... And then what was Odin. what was the next one? What was the next one? I don't think at least for me, I think the next one was Odin, which would be Edie's. Oh wait, right, right, dad, right, 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 which right. could I, as far as I know, could be missable. Like, wait, did I wait? Who am I? Th- describe it to me. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to remember the thing. It's like that old. Um, I can't remember the name of the toy thing where you put. Put it over your eyes and you flip oh, the film. Oh, okay, wait, yeah, 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 yeah. I did see that. I did see that. Yeah. You just flip through the flip book. Yeah, yeah. That one was a lot more simple and it was. Yeah, compa- that's why I kind of, I kind of forgot. I wasn't even thinking about that as one. That one by made. far the most forgettable. Yeah, because that was just especially stupid. again. I'm pretty sure you can skip it. Yeah, I went back. It's like eh, I look around. It's like oh, there's something. Yeah, I did find. And it at that, that point, I realized okay, I now know the what to find <laughs> to look at this stuff. So. Game doesn't care about Odin nearly as much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then Calvin was yeah, the, the one, uh, one with the swing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we already talked about that one. But that one, like, I was, I, I was amazed because when I started doing it, I was like, okay, I know where this. Is. I've already seen this before. But then that one probably hit me almost harder than a lot of them. Yeah, because the act of you having to do it, and that's another thing. I think this game is worth getting just for the experience that it mm-hmm. puts you through and everything. Yeah. I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember because I'm bad at this. Oh yeah, it was Walter's point of view, wasn't it? Like that the was that the letter that, the, yeah, or the that paper was, you read, and that was the like he was in the underground bunker. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because Calvin was his twin brother. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I was talking about like how he wanted to be an astronaut while you were doing the swing thing, and then he yeah. kind of finally got his wish. Yeah, and that's what it, like, and he finally flew, or yeah. whatever. He finally got. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a little confused with Walter, with the guy in the bunker, though. I was a little confused what exactly um, was going on there. Like, um, okay, I think for that we. Sh- oh wait, I'm okay. I think I got the whole Walter and Calvin thing mixed up. Well, I know Calvin was the... Um, no, no, oh, no, I know Calvin, but I think I'm getting the twin brother. Who's his twin brother? Uh, yeah, up. I forgot who it was. It might was been, it Sam? It might have been Sam. Yeah, I think it was Sam. Um, okay. Either way, Guy so and the, Bunker. The, the get into Walter. Because the, this remember, the, we'll go on to the next one. Barbara. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the... With who, the comic. Yeah, this was a very... Like, ooh, this is this is interesting. This well, is that's what, yeah, suddenly you're in a comic book style Yeah, thing. and then at some point you're coming through the comic, but at some panels... You get to walk around like you have for other characters, but the art style is still in that comic style, which I found really cool. Yeah, and it's like more lighthearted, but it's also what do you think? Right? You know, it's like yeah, but I, I she was murdered. I'm sure I was um, hitting. I'm sure you did the same thing. I, I hit everything with the cane. I got yeah. the cane and I immediately started. Just I got a trophy it. for hitting things. I, I might have. I don't even remember. <laughs> but yeah, that's um yeah. That's kind of messed up, yo. <laughs> yeah. And part of the thing with, I guess, well, is there anything more than, rather than cool aesthetic and suck, she got murdered? Remember, so, like, this was something that was just written about something that actually yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a that comic. Down. That's what I... Kind of loosely it. based off, because in the comic, there were monsters. Like, real yeah. monsters, obviously, that didn't happen. It They seemed to really imply, like, it was her boyfriend that the, murdered her. Yeah. We've never heard from again. Um, yeah, going to Walter. Part of the reason he was in the bunker, if that's what you're wondering, is because he kind of witnessed the whole barber thing. Uh, uh, so he was afraid, he he was there. The yeah. yeah, he was and had some regret because he couldn't help his sister. So he just kind of went into the bunker. Yeah, and yeah, and 
him dying, yeah, he got hit by a train. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that yeah. that was a lot more, I guess, of a simple one because you like, yeah, you know, he was talking throughout the whole thing, and then it was a more of a, at least looked more normal because you you just went out of the bunker onto train tracks and then yeah, you're hit yeah. by a train. Nothing as magical or I guess visually interesting. And I don't mean that as a, in a bad way. As like the other it stuff. was. I mean, like I did like the cyclical thing of like you eat the you ate the peaches. I think they're peaches. You know, mm-hmm. every day or whatever. Oh, yeah. And there was the clock or whatever. It was mm-hmm. like rumbling, and then one day it stopped. And uh, you know, like that. I think that was an interesting way to doing it too and that's why I just like how different all of these were yeah. where you go from a comic book to <laughs> the next one Sam with the camera that, and then and then yeah and then you just have like a heartfelt sad thing or whatever and like I don't know about you but I wasn't expecting that I should have yep. been expecting that but I mean like you go through the whole thing and it's you know taking the photos or whatever I like I, I, I sat there forever because I couldn't find what I was supposed to take yeah. a photo of like every time. It was, it was like kinda, one. It's like, oh, what, where am I supposed to look for this? It was kind of annoying. It kind of like, yeah. I, it did lose some of the emotion of it where I was like, okay, all right, this is nice, but where, yeah. where, where, where do you want me yeah, to go? Yeah, it ended up being like in the <laughs> far, like bottom left corner. Like you got to turn all the way to the bottom left or yeah, something. Yeah, and like I, I think I looked over there several times, but it, like she stopped. So I was like, oh, I, I'm not supposed to be going over mm-hmm. that. But... but I was not expecting him to the deer to like kick him off, and that's what yeah. all these are just so like freak, yeah, things. But I thought that one was good. The camera was annoying, but it was still mm-hmm. good. What it represented was good, or like yeah. how they told that story was it? Was I, I thought, good. yeah, yeah, how, yeah. And it's like a father trying to get her to hunt, but she's. It's like no, Dad. I want to kill. <laughs> And it was sad. Yeah. This game's so sad. <laughs> and, um... Sorry, we already talked about Gregory. Yeah. But I also love the kite one. Yeah. Because I loved how, you know, like... I liked when it pick Obviously, the kite, like, picks up mm-hmm. all this debris everywhere. And you're you're doing this, and it's just kind of... It's another one. Like, you kind of... You have to initiate everything, even yeah. though you know where it's going. Mm-hmm. I also like how... In- kind of what they do throughout the game like you hit like the letters and then it makes the words of the talking yeah. I like how they did the whole whenever something what, well especially when you're on you're in the house whenever um, Edith said something like the words appeared on like the wall or something uh, yeah, I, 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 like that that. I like that I like that too yeah and how you like walk through them and um yeah sorry we had the uh, did you have anything else to say about the kite one mm-mm I guess that was one of the more forgettable ones, but not really. I mean, that yeah. was still crazy. I guess, I guess just comparatively, yeah. for the most part. And then, yeah, Milton, which... So so he just went missing. We don't really know what happened to him. Yeah, but, uh, I guess some I don't people know if could argue that... more than I did, but... Yeah. He just disappeared. Yeah. That's all. That's all. Yeah. Which I guess some people could find as a negative, because you didn't really find out anything about him, but... That's not really the point of this thing. Sometimes you just, sometimes people don't. Sometimes you don't find that stuff. Yeah. And I I thought it was like that, but I did like how Edith kind of like filled in some of the information there when she was like, eventually her mom sealed the door anyway. Mm -hmm. Like even though I didn't know about where he was and that's so sad to me too that she like gave up looking for her son because Mm -hmm. she just assumed he was. And and that's, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And that was and like and I felt like that it told you enough. Like I liked it. I, I kind of liked that they left that one without a something. And obviously there was nothing to have because no one knows. Like there's yeah. there's no way for Edith to know. Yeah, yeah. Because this is through Edith's eyes. If yeah, honestly, if they did do something with Milton, that would just be It'd be a little like yeah. That would have probably taken me out of it unless they did it like the best way possible. I can't even think of a way. I don't like know. it could have. But worked. I kind of like how you were just left. You just went to this tiny little room with all of his paintings or whatever mm-hmm. and that's kind of what he left that's all he yeah. left of this and you kind of like you don't know much about him but that's like you, you know you just get this little taste yeah also I guess going back to the whole maybe Milton showing up type thing when you're going for the house uh, I don't know if you noticed but you notice Milton's paintings when you're going through stuff like oh he's been here before yeah so it kind of makes you think is this leading to Milton like do you find out yeah so. I mean, maybe if you look hard enough, maybe someone can yeah. figure out something. I'm sure someone's we're probably just dumb dumbs. Game. We, I mean, we're definitely dumb dumbs. Oh, yeah. 
But I love how like lived in. Like I mean, the, his room, every room just feels like it. Really feels like it's that person's room, and it's mm-hmm. lived in like that, like Milton's, and that's what. Also, that's a freaking awesome house. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, it's a terrible house because it has so many yeah. bad memories for her. But um, it's pretty sweet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were there other ones that we haven't gone through? Uh, we talked about Lewis. I guess the only really ones are Edie, which is Edith's great grandmother, and uh, the, Don. And that, yeah, that was yeah. Which is yeah, pretty. Pretty much them telling Edith telling us how the last night that in last the house, night, yeah. and then you know, or the last night of Edie's life, pretty much as far as she knows what happened, and then it transitioned to um, Dawn dying, Edith's mother dying. Yeah, yeah, um, and it kind of it kind of teaches you a little bit about a mystery because you find. E- Edith finds Edie's journal, like, he's about to talk about it, say something about a fan, like, a secret, like, something about the curse, and then... And then she gets pulled away. Yeah. Yeah. Then she <laughs> hang a little bit there if there is something. And you're like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that, that, those were all the flashbacks. And so, did you expect, did you expect Edith to die in the end? Kinda, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's one thing, Dory, I want to... <laughs> Were you surprised when she mentioned at some point she was pregnant? Yes. I, I did not like, yeah, I shouldn't have done it 22 months pregnant. I was like, <sighs> I saw it coming. You know why? Why? I looked down at some point, I saw a belly bump. It's like, is she pregnant? Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. Then she said, like, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and it could have been nothing, but it kind of looked like it. Uh, after that, I was, I mean, like, I wasn't sure if she was going to die. I definitely thought about it. And after she said she was pregnant, I was like, uh, yeah. oh, girl. Oh, girl. You now got- we mentioned this. We got to talk about the last Because she said she was the only fit. So as soon as she said she was pregnant, I was like, no, you ain't. <laughs> well, now we got to talk about the technically the last gameplay thing you do. The child being born. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And do you want to talk about that for 10 minutes? Yeah, let's do it. No. <laughs> yeah, that um, might be the first um, in the first time I've ever seen the inside of a vagina in a game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is there another game where you saw? Well, the- not a vagina, but I can think of <laughs> South Park Secret Troops. A weird game. Ah, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I thought that was interesting. Like, it was yeah. a way, and like I like that you kept getting her, you know, like mm-hmm. dialogue of that as you're yep. going. You like kind of knew what was happening there, and then it was like immediately the bomb of like, and she's dead. Yep. And then and that that, that kind of that was, it was kind of like the whole time it was like, is this family really cursed or is it a bunch of coincidences? They were just very strange coincidences yeah. and everything. And then that was almost like, for me at least, that was like the nail in the coffin. It's yeah. like, no, this family is freaking... She has, what, 17? Three yeah. Childer. This 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 family's cursed. Yeah. This family's got some bad... Like, that, like all I've got to say is little Billy Finch, whatever his name is. Did they give a name? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He should just enjoy the time he has. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. I also kind of like how in the beginning they kind of point to like this may not be Edith, but then you kind of think you think it is at first, and then as she goes like, "Oh, this is not her. This is the child." Yeah, like I, I yeah, I was the, I was always kind of wondering. It was like, "Are we Edith? Is Edith someone we're gonna find? Is this the you know?" Like, yeah. yeah. Now it makes me wonder who is taking care of this child. Because it's kind of interesting. I mean, at least she had a mom like growing up like longer than like yeah. this dude's a little kid. <laughs> He's like, well, the, and the dad, the kid's dad, never mentioned. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, I mean, again, let's be real. Kids probably gonna die not that long from now anyway. But <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, but, the dad might too because they mentioned Edith's dad dying young at some point. Sanjay yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude this family man <laughs> and I I, I like that but I like that they don't explain the curse yeah I like that that's kind of like left it, yeah it's one of those 
things where if they did explain it, it would really cheapen it, and it the was. explanation would probably be dumb as hell. It probably would. That's one of those that it's better just left to your imagination and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I like that with all the surreal crap like in the game that was, I mean, surreal good crap yeah. um, that's in the game. But all of that's just kind of metaphorical. Really, the only actual supernatural thing is this curse. Yeah. Is that there is them one. all dying kind of young and mis, you know, yeah. just randomly. <laughs> And it seems obvious there's something going on. Yeah. The fact that none of them survive. I mean, good on Edie. She she lived a full life. That that's the only one. Yeah, I oh know. yeah, she's the only one. She's well, the only one. That um, like... Walter too. Okay. He lived a pretty long time. Yeah. But well, he didn't live a happy life. He lived in a bunker. No. Yeah, he lived in a bunker trying to stay alive. Like yeah. <laughs> like in fear. Yeah. And guilt. So yeah. And he like yeah walked walked out of his bunker and got hit by a train. It was like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even the happy parts of this game are sad. <laughs> what a game, man. Yeah, like you just what a, what a experience that is. It's it's definitely. I mean, it's something very unique. I have never played a game like that before, and mm-hmm. I think this will set the bar for that kind of experience. Because this did the environmental storytelling, but it also like it went further than that. Like. Mm-hmm. It, you know, like, they could have stopped there. This could have just been you learn about, like, the Gone Home. Like, this could have been just you learn about their stuff by reading through their things in their drawers or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it would still probably be a good game. But they just went the extra mile with that. Yeah. And to the point where this game probably took a while. To, I mean, I know it took a while to develop, and you can see why. But Yeah. I don't know the history of this developer, but let's see. I mean, overall thing, but yeah. Unfinished Wild came out in 2012. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, stuff stuff must have happened between them. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I don't think this game would have taken taken like four and a half years. I think it's also been announced and delayed several yeah. times. But it I came know. out really well. It's reviewing yeah, really well. 100 percent did. I don't know how sales are. But I don't know. I I've heard a lot of positive. I mean, obviously, it's a smaller game. It's going to sell. I mean, sell yeah, less, and it's not, and it's definitely getting the buzz. I hope it'll be. Yeah, I hope it'll be a slow burn. I hope people will start to um, hear about it. Maybe yeah. through our podcast. Maybe. 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 Okay. So, um... Get your roommate to play it. Oh, yeah, I should. should. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and Olivia. Yeah. Yeah. So, you have any closing thoughts on Edith Finch, Jeff? Great game. Makes you think about things sometimes. <laughs> Here is. I sat up, I sat in bed, like, thinking about that for a long time. Yep. And it's... And we talked about how unique, like, some of his storytelling stuff is, but you don't really, you don't really expect it going in, which mm. adds to it, so... Yeah. Well, if you're at this point, you're not going in blind, oh, or right. you already played it. Well, I, I, I hope, I hope <laughs> you've already played it if you got this far. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I don't have anything else to say other than that's just it's one one heck of a game. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you for listening to this with us. Let let us know what you like about this, what you don't. I think we went. Went pretty long with the Edith Finch talk, but there's a lot to talk about in that game. Yep, yep. I, yeah, let us know how you like the I guess the spoiler cast format so we can learn going forward. Yeah. And hopefully we'll do more of these. If, if you think we should structure it more or if you yeah. like the more casual, just kind of flowing from topic to topic randomly. Mm-hmm. You know, let us know what you like, what you don't like with yeah. that, and um we'll improve that and what you want to hear us do spoiler cast on. This was an easy one for us because it's like a three hour game. Yeah, it help yeah, it'll be hard on some games. We're not playing the same thing at different times, and at some point, it's like no point in doing this. Everyone's already played it. Yeah, but um, if you haven't already seen it, definitely check out our Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two spoiler cast. Yeah, that should be up unless something goes terribly wrong in the next hour. Uh huh. All right. Well, um, that's it for this week, Jeff. Yep. Well, hopefully, see you guys next week. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you.